let's talk for a minute about factoring trinomials with a c that's negative or a negative constant. When the c is negative, the factors are going to have opposite signs. Your sign of your b is going to tell you which factor is positive and which factor is negative. The factor with the greatest absolute value is going to have the same sign as b. So once again, the sign of b tells you which factor is positive and which is negative. The factor with the greatest absolute value has the same sign as b. So for example, let's say if we have, say you got x squared plus 7x minus 18. Well, our factor with the greatest absolute value is going to have a positive sign. So really all, all we're doing is the same thing that we've done before is we want factors of negative 18 that sum or add to 7, right? So you can do negative 18 times 1, 18 times negative 1, you can do 2 times negative 9, or 9 times negative 2. List some of the factors, add them together, and this one here adds up to 7, so we know our factors are going to be this. You got x plus 7, not 7, x plus 9, that's a 9, write it down here, x plus 9 times x minus 2. When you pull it out, you get x squared minus 2x plus 9x minus 18, and that gives us x squared plus 7x minus 18, right? Let's do another example. What if we had x squared minus 5x minus 24. Notice that now it's got a negative, so you know the sign of b is going to tell us which factor is positive, which one's negative. So the factor with the greatest absolute value has to have the same sign as b. So the factor with the greatest absolute value this time is going to be our negative factor. But we're just going to set it up like we did before. Factors of negative 24. What do we want them to add to? Or sum to add to negative 5. So, you know, 6 times 4, 12 times 2, what, 8 times 3. So let's just... So if you got a negative 6 plus a positive 4, that's going to be a negative 2. So that's not it. Um, you know, 12 plus negative 2, that's a 10. That's not it. Let's look at our 8. You've got minus 8 plus 3. That's a negative 5, right? So that's what we're looking for. So we've got x minus 5. Ah, not 5. I'm looking at the wrong column x minus 8, x minus 8 times x plus 3. Let's pull it out just to make sure. You got x squared plus 3x minus 8x minus 24. So now you got 8, x squared minus 5x minus 24. So we got it right. So really, you know, it's just we've got a little bit more to look at, you know, because we've got to consider the positive and negative versions of some of these numbers. But other than that, it's the same thing that we've been doing. So once again, it's something in algebra that's not super hard, but it feels hard because it's kind of time consuming and there's some trial and error. And hey, if you don't get, and, and this, I said it in a previous video, I'm going to say it again. Students, a lot of times, some people learning algebra think, hey, if I don't get it right the first time, I'm not good at it. You're not going to get it right the first time. There is some trial and error to this stuff. You know, and, and that's the key there, trial and error. That means you're going to get some right, you're going to get some wrong. You know, the more you do it, the quicker you can go through that trial and error process. But don't let it make you think that you're not as smart as you really are.